Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start with the story. Am I the asshole for telling my husband I view him as a burden, rather than a partner? I'm a 34-year-old woman, and I've been with my husband Nathan, who's 37 for 8 years. Ever since our daughter was born 3 years ago, I've struggled to trust Nathan, with even the smallest tasks. When I was 19, a semi-truck driver fell asleep at the wheel and turned my car into scrap metal with me inside. I have enough metal in me to light up like a Christmas tree at TSA, and I'm physically impaired with good days and bad days. I used part of my settlement to buy a house outright, and had it retrofitted to accommodate my needs since I'll eventually need a wheelchair. I work in software development, which I enjoy, and it's flexible enough to let me work from bed on bad days. Nathan hasn't worked in five years. It's been fine until our daughter was born. With my settlement, paid off house and salary, I appreciated having him home with me. He took care of most of the domestic duties, and we had a weekly cleaner with a monthly deep cleaning because it gave us more time together. Ever since our daughter was born, it's like a switch flipped in his head. For our daughter, he'd buy the wrong size diapers, not mix bottles properly, put diapers on backward, leave poop-covered wipes lying around and forget to latch cabinets. Recently he went to the store three times in one week, because he kept coming home with the wrong size socks and shoes for her. I finally just ordered the correct ones from Amazon. For me he's tried to help with my weekly pill organizer, but has spilled new medications all over the floor multiple times, failing to pick them all up. He's repeatedly brought me grapefruit juice with my meds, something I absolutely can't have. He's forgotten I can't have dairy, putting milk in my coffee or cheese on a burger. He's broken so many of my things from being careless. He shattered my laptop because it slipped from his hand while packing for a trip, even after I specifically said I would handle my own electronics. We've lost countless spoons and forks to the disposal. He tried to replace the head gasket in my car but over-torqued a bolt, shattering it inside the engine block. Two shops said they couldn't repair it, so we had to get a new vehicle, which cost $11,000 and... A week later he crashed the new car into the garage door, because he confused the brake with the accelerator. He wanted to take up TikToks and streaming as a hobby, and I supported him initially. But I soon noticed a pattern, he was sloppy and careless with anything related to our daughter or me, while his personal projects were meticulously done. He'd build elaborate sets for his streams or videos, then leave the garage and leave his focus behind. Four nights ago, it all came to a head. He spent nine hours, straight streaming himself building a new set piece. Meanwhile I worked, picked up our daughter from summer camp, cooked and fed us, and got her ready for bed. I asked him to take out the trash and let him know I needed to get some work done, and would be in my office. He said he would. Two hours later, I left my office and found the house uncomfortably warm. He'd taken out the trash, but left the front door partially open. The garage was blasting with game volume. I panicked because our daughter could have easily wandered out of the house, and he wouldn't have noticed. Thankfully, she was sound asleep. Then I noticed the stove burner was on with a small pot on it. Nothing was inside. I hadn't used the stove that night. I went into the garage and said, Hey, I need you for a minute. I told him about the door and the burner. He responded, I thought I locked it. We checked the camera, and he hadn't. He said he was planning to make ramen and forgot. He pulled the still hot pot off the burner and placed it directly onto our daughter's favorite plastic plate, which was now ruined. I'll admit I overreacted and screamed, What are you doing? He realized his mistake and pulled the pot off the plate, but then placed it directly onto the countertop. I quickly grabbed it and ran it underwater to cool it down. I told him I couldn't deal with him tonight, that I was taking my meds and going to bed. He got a cup from the cupboard and set it straight onto the burner that had been on. I hit my limit. I started crying. He kept saying it was fine, things happen, it's just an accident, and that he'd had a rough day from streaming. He couldn't understand why I was crying over a cup. We could replace it, he said. The anger overwhelmed me and I screamed, it's because I have a liability and not a partner. He asked, what the fuck does that mean? I yelled that I couldn't trust him to do anything. I always had to watch him like a child, bear the cost of his mistakes, and every time I hoped I could trust him to be an adult, I ended up getting screwed over. I said, I can't see you as a partner anymore, you're just another liability in my checkbook. He stormed out of the kitchen and went to bed. I called my mom and told her everything. She thinks it's just stress and offered to take our daughter for a week so we could figure things out without her seeing it. She thinks it was an asshole move to call Nathan a liability. The next morning, I told Nathan my mom would pick up our daughter from summer camp and offered to watch her for a week. 
He said, okay, and that was the extent of our interaction. He spent all day in the garage, playing games, making TikToks and streaming. For food, he's been ordering DoorDash to be delivered directly to the garage. It's been days, and he refuses to be in the same room as me. I've tried messaging him to talk or figure out a solution, but he's left me on raid. If I go into the garage, he ignores me, but apologizes to his friends or viewers for the interruption, and mutes his mic when the noise stops. Before the blow-up, I had asked if something was going on. I tried to respond gently to his mistake so our daughter didn't associate mistake with anger. I asked him to see a doctor to check if something was medically wrong. He always said I was overreacting and dismissed my concerns, even when the same mistakes kept happening. He'd brush off the expense of his mistakes as, not like we can't afford it. I love him dearly, but I miss the person he was before we had a child, the one I could trust and rely on. Did I mess this up forever? Was I too harsh about his mistakes? Am I missing something? Am I the asshole? Update. On Friday, I finished work to the smell of food cooking. Nathan had plated dinner on the table when I left my office. He said he wanted to talk over dinner. Some people had told me my story was on multiple TikToks, which prepared me for the possibility he'd see it. I told him honestly that yes, I wrote the post, and that's how I feel. I read the comments on Reddit, and I won't delete or change anything just because he might see it. He told me he'd spent the last day reflecting on how bad things might be, and considered all the medical diagnoses suggested. He said he doesn't think he has ADHD or autism, but he might be depressed. He's willing to see a psychiatrist if it helps ease my worry or rule out major problems. He did say something jokingly that hurt me deeply, that everyone suggesting something was wrong with his brain must be onto something because he chose to love and marry someone medically fragile. He admitted that on the night of the incidents, he'd drunk a bit too much while streaming. He'd been filling his wine bottle with grape juice to look like he was drinking, but was actually sober. He promised to monitor his drinking more closely. After dinner he surprised me with a trip to see the new Deadpool movie. We went to a theater where he had found a limited edition popcorn bucket. I now have the baby Deadpool bucket that holds both popcorn and a drink. The next day we talked about how our family dynamic changed for the worse, and how little things had added up. We discussed how I see change as part of an apology, and how his repeated mistakes rendered verbal apologies worthless. He admitted he hadn't realized how frequently he was making similar mistakes. We talked about short and long-term changes, including him scheduling his own doctor appointments and fixing or replacing things he damaged out of his allowance account, not our shared funds. We agreed that he would pay back the costs of the garage and car repairs from earlier this year, and that it would take him longer to cover the cost of the engine replacement. He's committed to stepping up and making things right. Yes, I see the red flags. Love bombing, not recognizing frequent mistakes despite repeated discussions, thinking verbal apologies are enough, and not understanding that repeatedly making the same mistakes is the same as never apologizing. I know he'll read this. Do I think this will resolve perfectly, and we'll stay together forever? Not really. Is there a potential path forward? Maybe. But my husband knows he has a lot to make up for and a tight schedule to fix things. The lesson for our daughter will be either taking real accountability can steer a wayward ship back on course, taking accountability is the right thing to do even if you don't get the result you want, or love alone isn't enough.